morning or night, depending on where you are, because I know that some of you in Los Angeles now is about, is it 10 or 11 a.m. in the morning of Sunday, the 11th day of April for some of you. And for those of you who are in Australia and in Japan, I know you have now gone into Monday. That's the way it is. I am going to report, or should I say, talk about very briefly what Dave Omahi said regarding the mess that they are now in, those of them that claim that they are governors from the East. He was reported in the newspapers as having said that they are now hiding their faces in shame. Dave Omahi, along with the rest of the Fule for governors, have now realized, or should I say recognized, that all along we have been right. There is nothing I tell you that is not ordained by heaven itself. There is nothing that I tell you that is not the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. There is nothing that I say to you that will not come to pass. We knew that they were wrong all along. And we must, of course, commend them for coming out to boldly say that they have been wrong and that we have gotten it right. Because they, from Mahi, have been in support of Fulani Janjaweed in a Boeing state and beyond. I'm sure he is even, he is even a junior patron of Miet Yala. These are the people that think that without the patronage of the Fulani Janja, with Caliphate, they will not emerge, or should I say, sustain their political relevance. But today we are making it very clear to them that isn't it very funny that those things that miscreants were talking about very many years ago, those who claim that they are intellectuals or the elite, so to speak, are now agreeing with what miscreants were saying a few years ago up until this very moment, of course. The instead Governor Dave Umahi said, that was last week, that governors of the region, we are currently hiding their faces in shame. He said governors of the region, all of them. These are the people that prescribed IPOB. These are the people that joined the Flannery Janja with to send men to my house to kill me. They killed 28 men instead. As a result of that very invasion, my father and my mother passed on. They died as a result of it. I lost my cousin and I lost my dog, Jack, in the process because they wanted me dead. Not the full no, not at all. The people that gave them the go-ahead to come to my house to kill me were the governors of the East, the same governors today who are now saying that they are covering their faces in shame. Why are they covering their faces in shame? Because they understand that they have failed the people. They understand that they do not have the requisite character resilience and toughness to confront our collective enemy, which is Fulani Janjawidism, the Fulani Caliphate. They lack the metal. They do not have the balls. They don't have what it takes to be able to confront the Fulani and tell them where to get off. But we have been doing so for very many years. For that, we were vilified, called unprintable names, and they ganged up to try to kill as many of us as possible, myself included, and we have paid the ultimate price in pursuit of this very noble cause of Biafra restoration. And that is why we are not going to stop, not today, not tomorrow, not ever. That was why I held a meeting with one of the leaders of Ambazonia. Because as I said earlier, the leader and president of Ambazonia is in prison in Yaoundé. Anybody, anywhere, claiming that they are the president of Ambazonia, they are usurpers, they are charlatans, and should not be taken seriously. The man fighting, the man upon whose head rests everything to do with Ambazonia freedom is in prison, of which Dr. Cho Ayoba is his representative and leader of war council. We must get those facts right. The same thing is now applicable to Dave Omahi and Co. Those that got it wrong, and we got it right. But it's a good thing they have shown magnanimity by coming out to acknowledge that they were wrong and they were right. And we should try as much as possible to forgive, but not to forget. Because you know how foolish these governors are. They will go back to their old treacherous ways because they cannot survive without serving the caliphate. That is their problem. But I wish they can win themselves of that dependence on people who do not mean well for them. I wish and I pray that they can do that. 
Uma, he said this thing in Abakaliki, the state capital, in front of the vice president of the Zoological Republic, Yemi Oshibadro, who paid a condolence visit to the state. A condolence visit. No one has ever told us who killed those people till today. No one. I heard some idiots from some glorified Alamajiri, Tanko Yakasai, and one other governor from the north, some fools gathered. Uh, I, I think they gathered somewhere. They said they held a meeting at Kaduna House. They were talking about uh, the killing of um, Hausa people. And I want to make it abundantly clear to them that we never killed any Hausa person, not at all. I am personally in good terms with Hausa people. I have nothing against them. They were foolish in years gone by by allowing the Fulani Janjaweed to use them. I am not against Hausa people. And I want every journalist, every newspaper, BBC, all the rest of them, all of you serving the interest of new colonialists to understand this. I am not against Hausa people. I am only against their stupidity for allowing themselves to be used by cattle herders to overthrow their ancient monarchies that were replaced with Fulani Emirate system of governance. Who killed the people in Ebony? Nobody can tell us. But what concerns them is allegedly, of course, so they claim the killing of four Hausa people in Olo, which is a lie, an absolute lie, because I'm sure they were the ones that killed those Hausa people. I can never give an order for any Hausa person to be killed because Hausa people are victims of Fulani Janja Buddhism, their oppressive lifestyle and their hegemonic tendencies. These are the things that we must all begin to have very, very clear in our brain, in our heads. I am not against Hausa and can never be. I want Hausa people to be free. I am campaigning for Hausa people to be free. I am campaigning for Wagi people to be free, for Nube people to be free, for Jukun. Every component ethnic nationality in that damnable satanic contraption called Nigeria put together by a white man and a white woman. I want all of you to be free. You must understand this very well. As we are fighting for Biafra, we are also fighting for you. Only if you can be sensible enough to realize it. Some of you are born into stupidity, which is the zoo. Some of you grew up in this stupidity. And some of you, of course, are exhibiting, should I say, the very worst excesses of belonging to a place that should not have existed in the first place. These are the things that you must understand. Umayi said, even when the killings happened, very unprovoked killings. Nobody provoked the Fulani Janja with terrorists to go into Ebony to kill them. Nobody is mentioning the victims of the Ebony massacre. You see, every zoo newspaper, I don't know what they've done to them, is carrying the fact that uh, four Hausa people were killed, not Hausa people. Nobody, nobody in their right mind will ever attack a Hausa person. The Fulanis are attaching themselves to Hausa to see if they can draw some, some sympathy and perhaps get the, the, the Hausa majority of the North to somehow fall behind them to attack our people in the North. And for those of them saying that we are going to attack uh, 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 Southerners in the North, please go ahead. I'm begging you, go ahead and attack them. Do it now, we are waiting for you. Go ahead and attack Southerners living in the North. And then you will see what will happen. Go ahead and attack them. We have set it time without number. We set up Eastern Security Network to read our farmlands and our forests of Fulani terrorists. Those who are not doing what we are doing today, they are refugees in the Republic. Those who failed to heed our warning on time today, the Fulanis are camped in their forests, telling them they cannot dislodge them from it. But we realize this very danger from the Fulani right from the onset. And we put in place some contingency to contain them, and we have done so successfully so far. And I must make it categorically clear for the whole world to understand what I'm saying. I know that some people specialize in distorting anything I say for their own selfish gains or benefit, or in their quest to try to sustain this spurious and, should I say, um, senseless one Nigeria. What I'm saying to you this evening is this. 
Anywhere we find Fulani people in our forests, they will be chased away from there. They will, be, I'm making it very clear and I'm speaking very slowly so you understand me very well. Wherever we find Fulani in our forest, God Almighty is my witness, we will attack them, we'll chase them away from there. Why? Because they, the Nigerian army and police are using them as cover, should I say, to advance the agenda of the northern, should I say, the Arawa Caliphate. They want to Islamize everybody. They want to take over our land. We're not going to allow it to happen. Day for my, he woke up very, very late. And now he's lamenting. A sitting governor, can you believe that? That people came to his state and slaughtered his people. Now he has realized that we did not provoke anybody. We have been called all kinds of names and we feel ashamed that the same people we are fighting for, Dave Umahi admitted that himself and all the other governors are fighting for the Fulani. That is what he said. And I'm going to put him verbatim what he said, exactly his own words. We have been called all kinds of names and we feel ashamed that the same people we are fighting for day and night, who are they fighting for day and night? Fulani Janjaweed, the same people raping our mothers, abducting our sisters, the same people slaughtering our fathers in the farm, the same people occupying our forest. A sitting governor, can you believe that he's saying they have been fighting for them? Oh my goodness. We as governors and leaders of the Southeast have been fighting for the Fulani to ensure the oneness of Nigeria. How can they come to my state to attack my people? And we are slaughtered and killed. These are the words of Dave Omahi, a sitting governor. Those that some of you erroneously refer to as a leader. Those that some of you, you think that by occupying a political office in Nigeria, somehow you are a leader. No, you're not. You're a criminal. You're an accomplice to murder. You are a slave of the caliphate because they control INEC, and with INEC they can do whatever they like. They can put into office anybody of their choosing. That is why each time they tell you, oh, why don't you go and contest elections? Go and contest. Because ultimately, they will announce the result. Fulani Janjaweed will announce the result, of course, with the supervision and guidance of Britain. That is why we are in the mess we are in today, that our people, we are slaughtered over 30 of them in Ebola. Nobody's talking about them. What I'm hearing is uh, four people killed in all, in all, allegedly, of course. Fulani claiming that house, why don't you say that Fulani's were killed? Because you will draw no sympathy from anybody. That's why you claim it's house to see if people can perhaps begin to understand or reason with you, which is a lie because no Hausa person was killed. We are not against Hausa people, can never be against Hausa people, because I believe that some of them have now risen up to be fighting for the same things they were fighting for. All of you saw them there campaigning and, should I say, demonstrating. Demonstrating for Arawa Republic. You saw policemen escorting them. No one was shot. Nobody. Other people can agitate all they like. Britain is uninterested. The only people that Britain wants to kill and slaughter are Biafran people. No other. They know that other people cannot sustain. They know what it takes to sustain a freedom uh, um, um, fighting movement of this nature. They understand that? They know freedom is very, very expensive. The Britain knows that no other sector, no other race in Nigeria has the type of heart that we possess. They know that very well. That is why others can protest. Others can come out and rally. Nothing will happen to them. Only Biafra. Because they know that since we have embarked upon this very movement, there is no going back. Others may go back, as we have seen recently. But we are not going anywhere. We are still here. We are still here until Biafra comes and all other ethnic nationalities are set free, or should I say, until the full and Janja we are chased back to the foothills of the Futajalon from whence they came. That is something that must guide our thinking, our reasoning every blessed day as we wake up in the morning, that we must do the needful. And what is that needful? That we must all be free. If you want to be a slave, once Biafra is restored, even before you can live in Kanu, live in uh, Medugri, you can live in Sokoto, that is your business. 
What the Fulanis decide to do with you is entirely your business. Not ours. If you live in the north, as they are threatening, they are going to kill you. If you live in the north and they kill you, that is your business. We cannot uh, um, um, uh, take the fact that you are living in the north, in the Fulani territory, or Fulani control, because they have no territory anyway, in Fulani controlled indigenous territories of the north that they have taken from the local populations. The fact that you're living in Jalingo, the fact that you're living in Guzo, because of you, our people are slaves. Not just in the zoo, but all over the world. I say you are dreaming. Fulani, if they want to kill you, they should kill all of you in the north. Because you don't hear. We cannot because you have a two by two face me, I face you brothel, hotel. In somewhere in, in uh, uh, Buzo, because of that, all of us are going to remain slaves in your so called stupid, idiotic one, Nigeria. Then you're dreaming. The Fulanis can do with you whatever they like. Because there is something sickening about Nigeria and all those that defend her, as I tweeted, I think that was yesterday, was it two days ago? The same country that you're in, that people are being slaughtered in Ebony, nobody's talking. Nobody is talking. Nobody. But the gov can you imagine the governors of the entire East never got together to condemn the attack on Ebony indigents? Never. They said allegedly unverified reports. They, they fabricated the news that four Hausa people were killed in Olo. And all the governors of the Janjaweed North met to issue a statement. That tells you the type of Nigeria that you're in. That tells you the type of idiots you call governors. These are slaves to the, to, to the caliphate. I saw what Mike did. I'm banning Igbo meeting in Obibo. All of you now, you can see what the idiot, like Omai, you can see what the fools are doing. You have kept quiet. Any day we react because Mike, we are going to capture Mike alive. God is my witness. I will get me alive. Mark today's date. Today is the 11th day of April 2022. I will, I will get him and I will catch him alive. And I will deal with the idiot. You see the way he's going about, you know, prancing from one place to the other, issuing his um, edicts and his decrees in River State, and all of you are quiet. Everybody, the whole world is quiet. BBC will not say anything. BBC will that satanic, satanic institution will not say anything. You can see him. That is a country where freedom or right to assemble is constitutionally guaranteed without any recourse to any court of law. We, he claims he's a lawyer. He never went to court to obtain an injunction against a meeting being held legitimately by people they claim are their citizens. He just issued an executive fiat. There will be no meeting. Who are you to say so? Without court order. And that is the stupid, idiotic country that some of you fools, some of you idiotic animals in the zoo want me to belong to. I don't blame you. You are black people. You don't reason very well, do you? You are black, you don't listen very well. I've said this thing to you before and allow me to repeat tonight. That is why you are being treated the way you are being treated right across the face of this very planet Earth. You people do not reason very well and that is why you are a laughing stock. That is why you are a joke and that is why people never regard you or take you very seriously. You are in a country you claim has laws, law courts, Constitution and legislature. Somebody can wake up in the morning without going. The essence of democracy is that before you do anything, you must seek the consent of somebody, at least. If not the people, at least the law court. That's why they are there. You didn't go to court. When it comes to banning IPOB, they rush to court to obtain an expatriate motion. But now you can sit, wake up in the morning and ban a meeting, demonize an entire race. That is what Mike is doing. Now that Mike's madness is raging all over the world, nobody can say it. All of you are blind, you are dumb. Because you are all animals in a zoo. The day our own madness will catch up with Mike, 
You will now stop talking about what we can do. You, you will start talking about our own madness because that madness is coming. That level of insanity, our brain, brain damage that the zoo is looking for, they will get it in quantum in abundance. Allow me to say live on air to the hearing of the whole world. Some idiots are writing rubbish. I saw some nonsense written by the British Home Office about IPOB and our agitation, all the rubbish they're writing. They can write whatever junk they like. That is their business. I don't give a damn. Our own madness is, this is, is coming. And I told you before, for one suicide bomber from Boko Haram, I'll give you 10. Our madness is, is, is developing. That thing that the zoo wants, you will get it. All of you idiots with your children abroad all over the place, making life a misery for ordinary people, I am telling you the truth. The revolution will swallow all of you. It will swallow all of you. You have not seen anything yet. You have seen nothing yet. And some of you just oh, please, uh, uh, can you turn it down a little bit? Like, oh, no, come, turn what down? When they were bombing all did you not see it? All of you just writing and talking rubbish against those people that we are sent from heaven itself, angels of God, unknown gunmen. It's actually, watch it. Uh, I, I don't have anything to fight nor defend myself with. There are people that came out to defend the defenseless. Why shouldn't I support them? Why not? When they were bombing, bringing helicopter gunships inside, I think you, you are clapping for hopes of them. All of you are clapping for the zoo. All of you have a, you've all abandoned what led to what is happening in Imo State. You are facing something completely different. Because all of you are hypocrites. Of course, you are black people. You are born into hypocrisy. You never face your enemies in the face squarely. Our madness is coming. You've seen nothing yet. I'm, I'm, I say it. In, I say it before it happens, because I'm not afraid of any idiot. No bagger. They have not given birth to you. I'm obey. I was in a zoo court and I called Buhari a madman inside his own court. I called him a madman inside Abuja High Court. They have not given birth to the idiot. That will make me not to preach the gospel that Elohim mandated that I should preach to the living. I'm not the idiot. They have not given birth to you. Nigeria is a sick contraption full of sick idiots inside it. All of from top to bottom. Obasanjo was holding a meeting with Sheikh Abubakar Kagumi or whatever the idiot is called. Sheikh Gumi, you know him very well. The same man that said that Boko Haram is a blessing to the North. Obasanjo, a former president, was reported to have held a meeting with him. Somebody that said that Boko Haram is a blessing to the whole of Nigeria. He has come again to be telling you, after at least he's told some of you, that bandits are also a blessing to the zoo. And you're all clapping for him. He's the chief negotiator on behalf of the presidency. Isn't it? You're all clapping for him. Sometimes I, I, I as you may have observed, for, for the past few days I've not been preaching. Because sometimes I think that you cannot preach to people who are incapable of reasoning. Everything I say is backed up with facts and figures. I'm asking you. Sheikh Abubakar Gumi, they call him a sheikh, he's not an Arab, but he's a sheikh. The, the, the bandit envoy for the Fulani Caliphate, the zoo presidency, because there is no president in that very place. His friends with Basanjo, discussing how they can make life better for Nigeria. I have warned my Yoruba brethren, Yoruba, don't allow yourselves to be used again. They have come again. No? Because they know they can, there is no traction where we come from. In the east, there is no space. They always run to the west. They always, uh, you know, play on your sentiment with religion because some Yorubas are Muslims. When that fails, they will tell you, oh, remember we fought the war against Biafra. Don't allow them to come in again. You want to fall for the same trick like in the past. But I look back into your forest. Can you go to the forest in Yoruba land now? The answer is no. Fulanese are everywhere. They have taken over your land. Meanwhile, they are busy writing their headlines. Every that is why I think that when the dust settles, Yoruba journalists should be held responsible 
When Fulani takes over Yoruba land, eventually they will, of course, I'm telling you today, when Fulani takes over Yoruba land, those responsible are Yoruba sons and daughters working in the press and in the media houses. Yoruba media. You thought you were doing IPOB or Biafra. That's what you thought. But today, what is happening? Fulanis are in your forest. They're not in, they are in ours and we are chasing them. They are in your forest. You cannot dislodge them. That's the difference. So I want every Yoruba journalist, before you write your stupid proscribed, before you write your stupid junk, why is it that when you people write about Boko Haram, there's no proscribed in it? Do you ever write proscribed Boko Haram? Because some of you do not know that. Now, I think it was Jonathan who, who um, labeled Boko Haram a terror group. It was actually the USA that um, designated Boko Haram as a terror group, not even Nigerian government. Why is it that when you write about Fulani bandits, you don't say proscribed? When you write about the no pros, it's only IPOB. Because that is what British High Commissioner is asking some of you to do. But because you're black people and you are journalists, you must behave like most other black people do, which is to be evil. Yoruba journalists are handing over Yoruba land to Fulani without knowing it. Why am I saying this? Because only Biafra can save. Only this alliance between the East and the West can save everybody in the South. Forget about uh, Pandev, uh, that old traitor. Forget about that old traitor. Forget about him. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 what's his name again? Edwin Clark. An African man asking a white name. Edwin Clark. Some people are not ashamed even over 90 years old, Edwin Clark. What has that got to do with a job lexicon? Nothing. Oh my, as we say where we come, okay, I don't know how to translate in English language. I'm telling you this. Sheikh Gumi is a bandit, a terrorist himself, meeting a former president in a country they claim that people are sensible, that they have their, their brain cells intact. The same man that said that Boko Haram is a blessing to all Nigerian Muslims. It is there on my Twitter. Go there, you will see it. I'm sure most other people carried it as well. That tells you the type of country you are in. And that when you hear this type of gospel and you fail to change, that means that there is something fundamentally wrong with you. Isn't it very, very funny? that the very, should I say, heinous interactions with Boko Haram and kidnappers, after interacting with Boko Haram, knowing where the kidnappers are, nobody has ever invited Sheikh Gumi for a chat at DSS headquarters. No, that tells you that every strata, every layer of security services in the zoo is part of this grand design to Islamize everybody to hand over Nigeria to the Fulani Janjaweed. That is their game plan. If not, how come nobody invited Sheikh Gumi? How come when Sheikh Gumi went to the forest to go and see the bandits, they knew the location of the bandits in the forest, there was no helicopter gunships. But look at Akwaibon, helicopter gunships. Look at um, Benue, helicopter gunships. Look at Holo, helicopter gunships. Does that not say something to all of you? I, I ask you people that you animals that call yourselves Nigerians, because if you're a Nigerian, you're an animal to me. I don't see you as a human being. All you animals that call yourselves Nigerians, does it mean that your brain cannot put one and one together to get two? Somebody who said that Boko Haram is a blessing to Nigeria. Somebody who went and met bandits, rapists, murderers, kidnappers, and armed to the teeth. Nigeria Army or Air Force did not bomb that very place that Sheikh Gumi went to meet the, his bandit friends. But they are bombing houses and villages. And you're telling me that such a people, that such an army, such a police deserves to be alive. Is that what you're telling me? That is why I go down on my knees every blessed day to pray for non-government. Anybody who is against them, 
May may death visit you many times over. I will ask you again. When Sheikh Gumi went to the forest to see the bandits, these are murderers, rapists, hardened killers from the Sahel. Why is it that the Nigeria Air Force did not go there to bomb the forest? It's a simple question. But they can bomb villages. The Nigeria Army can come into Benue and sack and sack, uh, um, 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 destroy the house of the traditional ruler. Kill people at will, and nothing will happen because Daddy Britain is there telling the Nigerian army, You can kill as many people as possible. We are here, we are Britain, who will defend you. And that is why nobody talks about it. Tell me, anyway, are you telling me that even in Myanmar, in Burma, where people are, are protesting, I switch on CNN and I see them? Myanmar is on the news every blessed day. Army brutality, police brutality, but in the zoo called Nigeria, they come, they kill us, the army can bring in helicopter gunships, they can sack villages, they can slaughter people, nobody will talk. Is to tell me about four uh, Alamaji Janja weed in all. Are you telling me that people are well at all? Are you telling me that you idiotic Nigerians are well at all? I've been begging them to face me in a debate. If you feel you are polished, you're educated, you're enlightened enough, if you feel you're well read, you come and debate me anytime, any day. But they will not come. Because as I said, only two minutes, I will destroy them. By the time I finish with them, their wives will no longer cook for them at home. Because their stupidity will be laid bare for the whole world to see. To understand the emptiness, the vacuousness the shallowness and the hollowness of the zoological republic the mentality that drives an average nigerian is an idiotic one anybody who believes in nigeria is a complete a, a complete idiot i'm telling you the truth sheikh gumi went to the forest the forest was not born yes where the bandits are because they are for the people but in our villages, in Akwaibom, is being subjected to aerial bombardment every day. How many Nigerian soldiers have been killed in the north? How many times have you heard that the surrounding villages or their homes and businesses were attacked only in the south, only in the middle belt? That tells you that Nigerian army is an army of occupation. And those that write about security in Nigeria or defend Nigerian army or police, they are also part of the problem. And may unknown gunmen find you people. That is my prayer every blessed day. Anybody defending Nigeria army or police is an enemy of the people. Because Nigeria army and police are the chief, they are the chief persecutors of the people in Nigeria. That was why uh, Ambassador Campbell said what he said. As long as you continue to abuse the rights of ordinary people, the United States of America can never ever help Nigeria. It's impossible. They will leave Boko Haram, leave the bandits, and be bombing villages in Benue and in Akwaibom and in, in the rest of the East. That's what they do. And you're telling me that is an army. People, some of you idiotic Nigerians don't even know the, the work of the military. You have no idea. That is why sometimes I ask myself, uh, what, what type of school did some of you go to? Let me educate you this evening. All you zoo animals in the zoo called Nigerians. Your shame is shaming me because you are foolish. An army is there to defend the borders of a country from external aggression. External aggression. Is only in backward Africa. Sometimes you wonder why Africa black people are so idiotic in nature. The army is not there to do the work of the police. Even in the zoo, all of you are there. You know, I remember very well under Jonathan's um, regime when people were, even the Yoruba said they would not vote for Jonathan because there were not enough Yoruba representation in the government. They, com they complained openly. I want to draw your attention to the hypocrisy of your average Nigerian. Hypocrisy. I want you to go back and Google. It was written on extensively. People wrote about it. That the Yorubas were marginalized in Jonathan's administration. Because of that, they will not vote for him. But in front of you, all of your eyes, everything has been fulanized. 
In fact, somebody sent me the, I don't know if it's a recording, I don't know what it is. Somebody dubbed my voice on top of a song. Quite hilarious, I must say. Quite hilarious about how Fulani had taken over everything. Took over all your lives. One Fulani IG of police goes, another Fulani comes in. Are you telling me that if this regime you have, the regime of the Janjaweed, were to be any southern president doing what they're doing in Asarok, by now, Nigeria will be on fire. Everywhere will go up in smoke. They will say, how dare you? Federal character. Have you been hearing of federal character again? When it comes to their turn, they decide which laws should be applicable to people. I remember them saying, federal character, federal character. All of a sudden, there is nothing called federal character anymore in Nigeria. And you're telling me that such a country deserves to survive. It cannot survive. It was built on iniquity, and we must bring it down. I surely zoo will fall. Chineke Nabaramake, but God Almighty is my witness, zoo will fall. And it will fall in such a way there will be no escape route for anybody. I'm telling you the truth. You cannot bomb terrorists in the forest. How many times have you bombed Boko Haram? Is Boko Haram not the problem? Uh, is Boko Haram not the principal reason? And of course, Fulani bandits, including ISIS in West Africa. All Fulani, for your information, they head the security services. The same Fulani are the ones heading every terror group in Nigeria. The same Fulani people. A lot of you are just there moving about sheepishly uh, as if you are zomb zombies, as if you are fools. You have no brain in your skull. Every terror group is Fulani. Those charged with defending Nigeria against terrorists are Fulani people. Those spending the money are Fulani. Uh, uh, um, uh, dear Nigerian, when will this your stupidity and idiocy leave your brain? Why, I, I, were you born this way or, or is something from the suya you eat? Where did you get your docility, your hypocritical nature, your cowardice, you are, should I, I, I lack words to describe your average energy. I don't care if you're an archbishop. I don't care if you're a monsignor. I don't give a damn who you are. Once you say you are a Nigerian, God knows you're an animal. Also, I'm telling you the truth. Because it means you have no brain. Tell me a country you will be in with federal character. They said there's something called federal character. One Fulani goes, <laughs> another Fulani comes. A 52-year-old boy, young man, was replaced. He should have been the IG of police. They retired him at 52. At, in fact, even 51, they retired him so that the Fulani can take over. And all of you are there going to work. That's shouting one Nigeria. Let's save our country. I don't know. Maybe Hitler should have come to Africa and clear, cleared us off. I'm telling you the truth. Some of you are, are, are so moronic, he's untrue. Your stupidity has no, it has no equal. There's nothing to compare it with, honestly speaking. Now, I want the Fulani Janjawi to understand that what we are doing is even backed up, not just by the scriptures, not by the Torah. In fact, I'm saying by Torah itself, by Christian Bible, and also by even the Quran. And I want to tell the Fulani Janjawi what Quran says, so they understand it very clearly. I'm going to put the Quran for them tonight, so they understand it. Because I also read the Quran. I read every literature that I can lay my hands on. Every book I come across, I try to read it. Because sometimes you need to understand the way your enemies are thinking. And I want to let Fulani Janja with Asorok, after all, Buhari is that the idiot who is in, in London, claiming he, they, they claim he went for treatment. Now he's writing to the Crown Prince of Jordan, saying he's on vacation. Because Aisha have, Aisha Zoo is useless, honestly speaking. The wife of your so-called president, after spending eight months in, in Dubai, shopping and having fun with her boyfriend, came back and said, we have enough medical facilities in Nigeria to take care of any illness. Why is this idiot traveling to London? Some, all of you, you read it. Those that said that Buhari is alive, all of you, you read it. Aisha said, our Sorok clinic is in good shape. I myself, I don't travel abroad. A so-called wife of the president. And all of you are there. In my next life, I don't want to meet any of you. You Nigerians, you make me, you idiots created by the British, you make me sick. Your stupidity, it has no, no scale can carry it, no scale can measure it. Aisha came back and said, 
I myself, Aisha, I do I no longer travel abroad for treatment because that's a rock clinic is doing very well. Whereas the people you claim, the person you claim is a husband is in London taking treatment. As soon as Aisha said what she said, the Ethiopian now said, I'm writing. Why are you writing to the King of Jordan to tell him we are on vacation? <laughs> oh, you want to put it out there that you're not on treatment, it's on vacation because Aisha called you out. You are not the husband of Aisha. She's upset. She called you out. I, Aisha, go, people should go and do a little bit of research. Myself, Aisha, I take my treatment in Nigeria. That's what she said. There is no need for anybody to go abroad. At that same minute was when you remember that uh, to write to King Jordan, the King of Jordan, Jordan in Jordan, telling the King of Jordan that you're on vacation. Whereas your so-called presidency, Garaba Shehu, and, and the, the Photoshop expert, Femi Adeshino, said you are going there for a long overdue medical checkup. Now you are there on vacation. As somebody asked them, I think it was Reno Mokri, does the queen come to Nigeria for vacation? Which president goes to another country for vacation? <laughs> Zoo people. <laughs> Nigeria. Honestly speaking, honestly speaking, <laughs> your madness is out of this world. Anybody you see that says, I am a Nigerian, that person is a monkey. When, when white people call us monkeys and baboons and all the rest of it, they are referring to Nigerians. I'm telling you the truth. A name that has no meaning, nigger area. You are nigger people. You have, that means you are an animal. That, the name that Flora Shaw gave to some of you is exactly how you're behaving today. That's how you're behaving. Let me tell you what the Quran says. In Surah 42, verse 41, all those who fight when oppressed in cure no guilt. But Allah shall punish the oppressor. I want Fulani army, Fulani police, Fulani whatever, customs, Fulani, any Fulani that carries AK-47 in an official capacity. I want you to understand this very clearly. I want to tell you what your Holy Quran said about IPOB and Biafra agitation. It is in the Holy Quran. I want Tanko, is it a, the other one idiot? The other idiot is dead. I think it's Tanko Yakasai who is still there talking about the every blessed day. Tanko Yakasai, you're a Muslim. The Asarok presidency is full of Muslims. Of the Wahhabi tendency, which is the very worst. Wahhabi tendency. All of you are there, you're Muslims. I want to quote your Quran for you so you understand it very clearly. That God Almighty in heaven that you call Allah is with IPOB. And I want to quote it for you. It's in the Quran, Surah, S U R A, Surah, chapter 42, verse 41. All those who fight when they are oppressed, there is no guilt. God is with them. But the same God will punish you, Fulani Janja, with you are the oppressor. Throwing bombs in Akwai Bomb, throwing bombs in Benway. But you cannot throw bombs against Boko Haram. And the reason why the world gave you those bombs which you cannot manufacture is to fight Boko Haram. But you're dropping it on villages and on villagers. And you want the world to come and help you fight Boko Haram. Anyway, it is Britain that is telling you what to do. There is no guilt. Even for those of them who are in the zoo police and in the zoo army looking for agitators to kill, I want to tell you this. That uh, some of you, you listen to Prophet Muhammad. This is Prophet Muhammad speaking. Prophet Muhammad said, all those who fight when you are oppressing them as the families are doing to all of us today, there is no blame for them. But there is blame and punishment from God for all of you in Nigeria police, in Nigeria army, who are oppressing the innocent. Anybody crying for Nigeria army or Nigeria police is an enemy of the people and avoid such idiots and such human beings. When our mothers were locked up by Okura Wasa in Imo State, they didn't complain. When the army were there, you know, shooting innocent people, they never said a word. When the army went on rampage in Aba, they never said nothing. When the army would set up roadblocks and be killing people, nothing. But when people react, every idiot will now find his or her voice. Let me tell them something. I think it was J.K. Rowling, I saw this quote. There's a, some, somebody called Voldemort. 
And I want to tell you, it's in one of J.K. Rowling's book. You know, J.K. Rowling is one of the greatest authors of all time, of course. Um, if you've not read any of her works, please try and do so. She's a very, very wonderful, wonderful, wonderful writer. Now listen, she said, Voldemort himself created his worst enemy. I want people to understand without trying to, to, to justify or support what unknown gunmen are doing, I want to bring a little bit of, should I say, perspective into what may have caused them to behave in the way they're behaving. Tyrants everywhere create their own enemies. Do you have any idea how much tyrants fear the people they oppress? Nigeria is under the grip of tyranny, full and oppression and tyranny. They woke up one man and said, you must go and register for NIM. And everybody said, anything they say, you, if they say jump, you say how high? Go and register for NIM. Everybody trooped out. Go and register for, for well, I don't know if it's BVN or BSF. All of you go and register. Anything they ask you, you do, you do. Because you are under a tyrannical Fulani Janjaweed regime. Even Fulani understands one thing. Everybody knows this that amongst the many victims of many operation pattern dance, amongst the victims of police brutality, amongst the survivors of state oppression, there is bound to be one person that will rise up and say that enough is enough. Go, it is replete in human history. Go and check. One day, one person will rise up and say, this rubbish, we have had enough. That is why IPOV is here. And that is why we are going to win. And having removed roadblocks and checkpoints along our roads, how many, a few weeks back, I told you that I'm giving them 40 days, there'll be no roadblocks. So then I tell you, I've got a moon, I've got to tell you, there'll be no roadblocks. And there's none. Anywhere they set up their roadblocks, I am giving the order again tonight to the hearing of the whole world. Dismantle it. Anywhere there is army or police checkpoint in Biafra land, destroy it completely. But having said that, I understand there are some idiots operating along Ihembosi, Ihiala, down to Obusi, to, to Upper Iweka. If you're one of those people that I received a report, that have been going about snatching the handbags of our mothers and our sisters and harassing people because we had uh, there is no more checkpoint. I will ask you tonight to stop what you're doing because we are going to catch you, and if we catch you, you will die. I repeat, if you're one of the if your son, your brother, your cousin is one of the idiots right now. Along from Ihiala to Upper Iweka, Obosi, I don't want you to come out on the streets. Because if you come out on the streets, people will try to justify the presence of police checkpoints in our land. We are not criminals. We had no standing police before the white man came. We are God fearing people. We are a people that are well behaved people who are well-behaved. I don't want, because we are clearing our land of police checkpoints because of that, you now come to begin to harass people. That rubbish will not happen. If we catch you, you will die. And anywhere there is a police checkpoint, I want it dismantled, destroyed. It's an order. I want it destroyed. They have no place in our land. The same checkpoints where they kill people, Anytime they kill people on our roads, nobody come, nobody, BBC, but well, you will not see BBC. Any day, survivors, survivors of the massacre of the army and the police rise up to say enough is enough. Every idiot from every nook and cranny will crawl out. BBC, BBC, BBC. <laughs> okay, I'll leave it there for now. I think um, those who, who want to hear, they will hear very soon.
Our crime in IPOB is that we rose up against Fulani tyranny. In time to come, some of you who are students of history will understand that IPOB saved all of you in the zoo from Fulani conquest and domination. We stopped them. Nobody else did. Only IPOB did. For your information. Those who are defending the defenseless must continue to do their work. We are going to chronicle all police atrocities in the East. And if you understand what they have done to us in the East, the army and the police, anybody called a Nigerian you want to destroy the idiot immediately. Doctors of what is in uniform. Where were you people pontificating now when they came to my house to kill me? and killed 28 of my men. Where were all of you idiots writing rubbish about her? Where were all of you talking rubbish all over the world about what is going on? Where were you, I ask you? Tyranny will always breed lawlessness. That I can assure you. That madness Fulani is looking for, they will get it in abundance. I assure you of that. Britain will not save them. Can never save them. Some of you vo voted for an idiot that committed treason. You're not ashamed of yourselves. Buhari committed treason in 1983 by overthrowing a legitimately elected democratic government. When you idiots voted him into power in 2015, I knew that day that there's something wrong with a black person. You people are not well in the brain. In this UG blacks, your brain, your brain cells are not complete. The idiot is now dead and they are parading every fool with a face mask every blessed day. I said, Buhari, black people, shame on you people, I'm telling you the truth. Shame on you people. You don't understand what is happening, but we are going to make you understand. We will make you understand. If you don't rise up now, the Fulani will take over your land. If you don't rise up now, Fulani have perfected their plans to take our land. Yoruba, please listen to me. That is why they are in your forest. The reason why we, we are not hearing about the number of Fulani, um, should I say, the, 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 the number of villages occupied by Fulani people or Fulani terrorists in Yoruba land, in your forest, is because your journalists are ashamed of themselves, as Dave Umahi is ashamed of himself. It's only shame that is stopping the world from knowing what is happening in Yoruba land. Yoruba forests are gone. Fulani have taken over everything in Yoruba land. Everything has gone. The only thing stopping people from commenting or writing about it is because the shame is now shaming Yoruba journalists. The same way that that shame has caught up with um, Omahi, Dave Omahi, and those you call your governors. Mad people everywhere. Fulani will come and tell you, not a, they will accuse IPOB. Every paper in the zoo will carry it. IPOB is responsible. ESN is responsible. ESN is a non gunman. Nothing like allegedly. Nothing. The same army with you can video army killing people in Nigeria and the police. The same Punch newspaper, the same Tribune, the same Sahara, the same, all of them this day newspaper guardian. They will say allegedly. That led me to believe that Lucifer must be a black man. The devil must be a black man because uh, there is no justification for that level of distortion of the truth. Once army commits a crime, it's alleged. Once something happens to the army, it is one group that must have done it, and it's either IPOB or ESN that must have done it. So I would disband the ESN. I cannot. 10,000 men under arms. 10,000 men. This is just uh, uh, the ones you can, die in the forest, the ones the eyes can see. 10,000 men under arms. And they have nobody to defend the zoo for them. We only need to stand up and the zoo is over. 
all our misery and our pain is over. Look at them for the first time in how many years? They've been begging them, restructure. They said no. They said now they have agreed. Why? Because we are now under arms. Eastern Security Network, and now we are now driving full and easy, full and easy away from our forest. Now they have remembered restructuring. God see of IPOB, nobody else, no other entity, only IPOB, of course, with the help of, should I say, the grace, grace of Almighty in heaven. I cannot take away the glory of God from him because he's God eternal. We have to do what we can as mortals. God Almighty in heaven, presiding over the affairs of men, is immortal. And unto him belongs all the glory. But we must remember that the catalyst for all this change, for full and to come out to say, we are now going to restructure, is all the years of hard work of IPUB and all the blood shed. The blood we have shed. But we are not interested anymore. They can take their restructuring and shove it where the light never shines. That is their business. Restructuring can go to hell. We want freedom. We want absolute sovereignty for every component indigenous nationality in this zoological republic. You come to Ebo and you commit mass murder. Enugu, mass murder. Anambra, mass murder. Imo, mass murder. Rivers, Delta, Abia, Benu, Ekogi, mass murder everywhere. Inedo, mass murder. In Yoruba land, their land is now being occupied by Fulani terrorists you told us are from the Sahel. I want that stupid because it matter away or whatever is saying, go and kill southerners in the north. That rain will fall on the zoo. You will see destruction at a scale that, uh, that even people, even white man or you will hear it and they will marvel. Do that thing you want to do. Go and commit another pogrom. Go and kill Igbo people in the north. That you do. That time, the world will that time will have justification to unleash this anger that has been seething in us for very many decades. We are looking for excuses, oh. and those southerners in the north, they are the perfect bait, the perfect trap for you, because you are stupid, you are fallen, you are a ginger weed. We know one day you will rise up to attack them, and that the the gates of hell will be opened. And you will see something that people will talk about it forever and ever. That madness, I will unleash it on the zoo. You will see it. You know, what you're saying now is just uh, pre they call it preamble, appetizer. The main dish is coming. There is only one solution to this very problem. Give me a referendum. That's what I'm asking you for. Allow Biafra to be free, or we all die. I assure you of that. I must thank our people who are in Australia and those who are helping from all over the world supporting ESN. I know that some of you will now attach yourself and say I'm supporting as well when you're not supporting. No. All of you supporting ESN, we know who you are. And we commend all, especially those from the, the message those of you from Australia sent, I have seen it. And I've acknowledged it. I have accepted it. And it will go to the front line to help defend our forests and our villages. I don't care what journalists write. I don't care what CNN writes about me. New York Times is irrelevant. I don't give a damn what they write. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. What I care about is the freedom of Biafran people and the freedom of those that want to be free. If you want to be a Fulani slave, bye-bye. Go and be a Fulani slave. All of a sudden, none of you is now talking about those foreigners from Mali. Where are they now? The foreigners from Mali and from Niger, from uh, Chad. Where are they? They're in our forests. And you're asking me to stop or to leave them there. It can never happen. And let me also warn the zoo journalists. Anywhere I see any foreign person in our forest in the east, I will attack that very place. I will give the order for the place to be attacked. And I will tell you why. I don't want Fulani in our forest. I don't want them there. If you are a Fulani person, you want to do legitimate business, go to the township. If you cannot live in the town, rent a home as we are all doing, or build a house as we are all doing in the north, then you are finished. I had a joint world press conference or press briefing with Dr. Cho Ayaba of Ambazonia. 
and the next day daily trust roads that they, oh there are four and eight. there is another is this and another nasarawa in calabar <laughs> nasarawa in calabar you are dreaming everybody must go back to where they come from i will gladly receive any time any day biafran people living in the north to come back home so we can build it you cannot be far away and be biting no come back home as the jews did in israel or else they will kill you in the north i know that some of you uh, in the north they, they they will use your blood to try and hasten the coming of biafra because one day the felonies will rise up mark today's death one day they will rise up and they will kill all of you in the north and then biafra will come very quickly because then we will unleash our madness and the world will know that we are justified in doing what we are doing that is why you must all come back home or else you will die there somebody posited and i believe that to be true the reason why the Fulanese are causing problems in Nigeria is because they are not even indigenous to Nigeria. They are not Nigeria. I mean, if there's anything called Nigerians, anyway. They are not. The land they took from Hausa people. The same Hausa people today are foolishly and idiotically, foolishly and idiotically, towing their path. I wish the Hausas can rise up. I wish all of you can stop being so cowardly and rise up to take what belongs to you as for us we're not going back it doesn't matter what anybody says it doesn't matter what you write we don't care what you do this is a battle between light and darkness and we are the children of light as we give our children as names we are not going to go back God Almighty in heaven is with us. Even Quran is, is backing what we're doing. Why should we back down? We're not going to do that. And on that note, we have come to the end of this very brief but emergency broadcast that the army patrolling our land, you're putting your lives in danger. You have no right to be there. You have no right to go and fight Boko Haram. You have no right to be there. It is not the duty of the army to be patrolling and disturbing innocent people. You have no duty to be in our land. The idiots that came to Zublu and, and uh, I tweeted and they disappeared, we will find all of you. I'm saying it so you can copy what I'm saying and this all over. The Nigerian army are a bunch of terrorists in uniform. They are the ones aiding and abating the terrorists you have in our forests. So they themselves are terrorists and we classify them as enemies of the people. That thing that will happen next year, let it happen tonight. And on that note, we have come to the end of the program. If you do not know that we are whiter than white and whiter than snow, now you know, because we are always right. Because in the end, we win. You know, one hour, one hour. In the end, we always win. It doesn't matter how stubborn you think you are. Ultimately, you will come round to saying that you are right. What Nam the Khan is saying is right. What are people saying? Didn't Nyangu not do something? When the fool left office, did he not say something? Is um, uh, Omahi not saying the same thing? And a few other repented people, are they not saying the same thing now? Because some of you forget or tend to forget that we are under divine instruction from heaven itself, not from man. Everything I see, mere mortals cannot see it. Before something happens, I see it years ahead in advance. If you don't know that we are whiter than white and whiter than snow, then you are mistaken. I ask, I have an assignment for all zoo animals called Nigerians. Go back and check Aisha Buhari's speech. She said, we have everything here in Asorok Clinic to treat every illness. I myself, I take my treatment here. Then what is the husband doing abroad? You ask. From going for medical treatment or medical checkup, it is now on holidays. According to the letter they said, the idiot in London wrote to King, uh, whatever, is it Abdallah of um, Jordan? They are playing with all of you because they know you're all fools. Nigerians are fools. May God help all of you. But above all, may Elohim bless, sustain, and keep.
Biafra. I thank all of you for listening. And from now onwards, I'm going to be live on air every two days because things are happening. We must be every two days we're going to be live on air. And I will encourage my Yoruba brethren to please continue what you're doing and intensify the effort. Intensify it. You know how slimy these people are. Or else Tinubu will hijack everything before you know it. Once again, allow me to thank all of you for listening. You must support ESN. Everybody must support East Security Network. Everybody must. To keep our land safe. The police and the army are working for the Fulani Caliphate. They are part and parcel of the Fulani terrorist machinery. And we must meet them. Wherever we find them, we shall meet them. With all the love in my heart from me from here, good evening.